Hello, guys, and welcome to another episode of TVD. Uh, I'm Seth Payne, joined by B-Rad himself, Dude Rad himself, Brad Rickard. And uh, I'm also joined, we're also joined today by the incredibly talented, super sweet, and also uh, ridiculously funny Cassidy Russell. Hey. Thanks for joining today. Me and Brad actually met in Cassidy's class in uh, an annoyance level two. That's yeah. true. Down in the basement. And it was a fantastic class. It was my introduction to Chicago, really. And uh, Cassidy has been a personal mentor to me ever since. Um, and you're just very inspiring and rock. So thank you for being here. Oh, Do you have a favorite book and or author? Oh, damn. Um, I love the Narnia books. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah. Maybe, yes, honestly, big C.S. Lewis fan in general. As a kid, I was really into, like, Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys. Okay. And I think I, I really love, like, young adult literature a lot. I do also read books for grownups, but... Are you a fast reader? Can you, yeah. like, focus in and, and just burn through books? Yeah. I was going to say, I've seen you read in multiple settings now, or, like, be, like, bar settings or at Annoyance or stuff like that. So... For me, I feel like I have to be in the right environment or else I get distracted too easily. So when I was a kid, I like had to stop. This is so dorky, but like I would read at recess and I had to stop because one time I looked up and the bell had rang and everyone had gone inside and I hadn't noticed. <laughs> oh wow. I was like then and just like the utter panic. I was like, okay, you're cut off. <laughs> that sounds like mostly a teacher problem though. They probably should have been someone should have noticed, right? Yeah, right. That's what I'm thinking. Do you have a book it growing up from uh Pizza Hut? You remember the book it program? Yeah. Um I, I did that once. Um our library had one. And so I was very into the I love libraries. And so that was more mine. They had like a, if you read 25 books or something kind of thing over the summer. Oh, you were on the accelerated program. <laughs> Brad, Brad's still working towards his first personal pan. It's been a... Dude, I'd love to. I'm, I'm really hungry, but I'm sure you both are familiar with the Panera Bread. Uh, you, you ever heard of the You Pick 2 at Panera Bread? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Okay. So this is a new segment we're going to call you pick two. So I'm going to give you a list of four things and you get to pick two of them. Okay. Okay. All right. Parks and Rec, The Office, Community, and 30 Rock. Oh, you man. pick two. The other two, they're going to a different customer. We have rewatched three of those four. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. It's a great question then. Awesome. Um, I, I think 30 Rock and Parks and Rec. Okay. Wow. Damn. All right. I'm not mad at it. It's very yeah. uncomfortable for me to watch. I know that it is funny and I do like it, but it's, I just want to die every time Michael Scott does anything. Yeah. Those early seasons are really tough too, just in general. And they're just funny, to, but like, I just, so wanna, funny. I just get so embarrassed for him that it's hard for me to watch that show. If you could witness an event from the past, present, or future, what would it be? Oh man. Um, I would really like to go to the Chicago World's Fair. Whoa, uh, like great the answer. City. What, um, what year was that? 1890. I think four. Yeah, 1890 something. Um, but yeah, I just, there's only like four pictures or something of it. What? I would like to see it. Damn. Uh, yeah, it was also, I think the first time a Ferris wheel um, was used. Like ever? Or in yeah. the US or, oh wow. No, just like that's, I think it was, that was the first time it was like unveiled. Holy moly. Fuck, Mary kill, Danny Tanner, Joey Gladstone, and Uncle Jesse. Oh, uh, well, I just really liked Uncle Jesse as a kid, like a lot. So you want to marry him? I can't decide. I mean, I guess if you marry him, you get to fuck him, right? I mean, at least a couple times, probably. Once, one to two times. <laughs> I guess I'd marry Uncle Jesse. I'd probably, ugh. You know Danny's clean. Yeah, but I want to kill him. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true too. I think it's less that I, that I'd want to fuck the whatever the third one's name is, and more that I just want to kill Danny Tanner. Yeah, if you fuck Joey Gladstone, you might bring that puppet though. Oh God, <laughs> Uncle Jesse and I just leave. <laughs> <laughs> what should people do at least once in their lives? Oh, go scuba diving at night. Oh, uh -huh. wow. where did you go scuba diving at night? Um, I have night dove in, um, like the Keys, uh, so off of Key Largo. 
Um, and it's wild because you get in the water like as the sun is setting generally. So like you can still see when you're in the boat, you know, but then you get in the water and you just have like a flashlight and it's so dark, but all of the, like a lot of um, ocean animals are more active at night. So you see different stuff. And like, if you shine your flashlight under a boat, you just see like 10,000 eyes because all these little shrimp are like looking at oh, you. Whoa. Whoa. Um, and your eyes like start to adjust. Obviously it's so dark that your eyes can't like, it's not like you start like seeing without a flashlight, but your <laughs> eyes like generally start to adjust to the darkness. So then when you come back up and it's like fully night, the stars are like the brightest thing I've ever seen. That it was, I mean, it was amazing underwater because you see just these really like active eels and like all the kind of like weird fish, you know, like the lionfish are like swirling around and stuff. Um, then you come back up and it, where I was, you couldn't see land. Um, so it just kind of looked like you were in this, like, <laughs> like I understood how like ancient cultures thought we lived in like a dome, you know what I mean? With like pinpricks when like that was believed for a while. Cause that's what it looks like. Like it looks like you were in a, just a dome with stars on it. You, you're not, you weren't like afraid being in the water, not seeing no. anything coming at you. Wow. No, I mean, I, I think when I dive, I get freaked out right before and then you get in the water and you're like, okay, I'm fine. Like it's, I love, I love being in water. So that part, like I'm not, I don't get nervous about the swimming. I was on swim team always and stuff. Um, but like right before I'll be like, oh, this is gonna be the time I get eaten by a shark. And then you get in the water and you're like, I'm not gonna get eaten by a fucking shark. Like, <laughs> now that I said that, I'm gonna get eaten by a shark. <laughs> yeah, you're saying yourself. <laughs> What's something people have forgotten that you want to remind them of? Oh my gosh, just in the universe? Yeah. <laughs> It can be like serious or it can be like a a book or a play or a movie or or like three D Doritos. <laughs> 3D Doritos. Oh I knew Seth would be hyped for that. I fucking love 3D Doritos. I keep thinking about um Scottish fairy tales lately. Okay. And there's like a <laughs> I warned you. Um but there's like a, a myth, like a mythical creature that was very important in like Scottish and Irish folklore that doesn't ever get talked about. Um, called a selkie, which is a like a woman who could turn into a seal. Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> okay. And I just think it's sad that like that that we I don't know we still talk about like dragons and you know I've I've been I also told you I've been rewriting Lord of the Rings but um, <laughs> and we just forgot about them. So it was just a woman that could turn into a seal. So it was more like, like a seal that could unzip their skin. Um, and then they'd hide their skin and like go be human for a little while to like check out the land. Oh wow! Um, then the awful thing was like uh, Irish and Scottish men heard these tales, and so then if they found a seal skin, they would hide it, and then that woman would have to be their wife, and she'd be stuck on land until she found her skin again. Pretty Jeez. fucked up, y'all. <laughs> do you like acting, directing, or writing more? Because I know you do a little bit of all of them. Yeah. Um. Dang. I think directing, like, I like how it makes me use my brain um, because it's so many things at the same time of thinking about what it looks like, but also what you're trying to say and also how to facilitate like comfort in your actors and also how to get out of them what you want. <laughs> you know, like it's that to me is maybe the most interesting because it involves so many pieces. Um, I think acting is probably the one that comes like most naturally to me. So that's the one that's maybe the most just like fun um, but I do, I do find directing like very interesting for just all the little pieces that you're trying to put together and then also trying to have like a overarching, you know, thing that that is exciting to me because it involves so many parts of your brain. Um, but acting's fun. I mean, dang, I got to do a lot of very different stuff this year, which was cool. If you could relive five minutes of your life over and over again. Oh, okay, I know. Like um, the best five minutes of your life. I, um, a couple of years ago, I, m my parents lived in Australia for a while. Oh. And um, so I went to meet them in like Thailand because it's like kind of in the middle <laughs> um, <laughs> flight wise. Um, and we did this like kayaking in these caves that when I was talking about like bioluminescence earlier that have that. And so like, if you trailed your hand in the water, it was just like sparkly glitter behind you that glowed in the dark. Um, and 
it like wasn't the best five minutes of my life, but it was just one of those things where I think at the moment, the time I was like, I'm never gonna see this again. Like, this is a crazy thing that's happening. And like, you could splash water on the wall of the cave and it would just, like the wall would glow. Wow. Yeah, I like water and things that glow under it is what yeah. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> Cassie, did you have a AIM scream name back in the day? Oh Ooh. God, yes. Uh, what was it? Okay. <laughs> So, um, I was a competitive Scottish Highland dancer for, um, like, 10 years of my life, more than that. Um, so my AIM screen name was Cute in a Kilt. Oh, that's a good one, though. You didn't even, no. have, you didn't even need Come numbers. on, that's pretty good. Oh, cute in a Kilt. No numbers or anything, so that's pretty cool. If you could anamorph into any animal, what would it be? Maybe uh, like a Scottish seal or something like that. Probably like, like a lady seal who could take her skin off. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like some kind of bird. Maybe like a like a wren. A wren? Oh, W-R-E-N? Yeah, just like a small brown bird, you know. Okay. It's very Nelly Furtado of you. Thank you for noticing. Do you, do you have any like big like influences, whether it be in comedy or art or acting or anything like that, that like really like I don't know I don't, I don't like the word inspires because I think that's like a weird term but uh that kind of maybe like showed you or like uh, showed you what you maybe wanted to be at some point so I um have done comedy since for a long time mm -hmm. um but I went to school and to grad school for art and so for a, a long time that was um I felt like a like a fraud in both because you're like, one foot in both worlds yeah like I didn't yeah. study theater and you know like I had an art studio, but I was also doing comedy. And so it felt very, like that made me feel very like fake. Um, and so I've always, I think like you mentioning Steve Martin, like it's very inspiring to me to see people who do more than one thing. Mm -hmm. that makes yeah. sense? Yep, absolutely. Um, because that's always been something that I've felt like a lot of shame is too strong, but like I felt a lot of guilt, I guess, about like feeling like I didn't pick one thing and commit to it. Um, so I think that's always really lovely to me, whatever the multiple things are, you know? Sure. And then I, I think more always, I, um, I mean, I've had some incredible like teachers and a lot of people when I moved to Chicago who were like, went out of their way to help me that will always have like a little, you know, spot in my heart. But I think for me, the thing that's exciting is like people that who are at your level, but work harder than you, that, <laughs> Like that I think always gets me going um that like then I have more of that urge too because it's not like looking up at something and being like oh I want to be there someday it's like looking over at someone in the room with you and being like I'm, we can I can go that, harder yeah. I want to do what you do um I think that is always exciting to me uh what is your happy place oh can I have three sure okay so here on the lake um camping in Yosemite Ooh, nice. um, and there's a bookstore in Seattle called Elliott Bay Book Company, and it's like the perfect bookstore. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for being amazing. You, it was so fun catching up with you and learning more about you. Very inspiring person to be around and a, a kick-ass teacher. So uh, um, really excited to see what else you do in the future. Thanks for being on the show, Cassie. What is the name of this episode of TVD? Oh, uh, two bad dudes. Two bad dudes. Oh. Dang, I like that. Of course. All right. Thanks, guys. Nice to see Hell you. Hell yeah. Yeah, nice to see you too.